Hey, today I'm talking about three American remakes of iconic anime. And the names of those three films are Speed Racer, Dragon Ball Evolution, and Ghost in the Shell. A best of is Speed Racer. This is a 2008 film that I liked so much back in 2008 that I bought it! And you know, I have fond memories of this movie, but I heard some bad things about it as of late. So I was like, oh, maybe it'll be bad like the other two movies I watched alongside this. But no, it was delightful. It was charming. It was terrific. I really loved this movie. It does have one notable flaw, but otherwise, it's great. If you're not familiar, the basic premise is there's this young man whose only passion in life is racing. He loves racing. It's his blood. But you know, corporate greed gets in the way of true passions. And so that kind of ruins stuff. And he has to deal with that while also dealing with the death of his brother. And yeah, no, there's so much heart. There's so much passion. Like this is clearly just a love letter to this, but also just like the drama works really well. Anytime Speed is dealing with his parents, it's some good drama. Christina Ricci, oh my god, she was such a standout in this. Besides the fact that she's just freaking gorgeous, like distractingly so. Oh, I couldn't find a good picture, but her when she was in the helicopter, who, who. Yep, that was nice. But like there's such a good chemistry between her and Speed. Like the two scenes where they're just chilling in his car talking work so well. You can tell that there's a relationship there, that there's a connection there. And if I was going to say that this movie was lacking in anything, it would be more Christina Ricci. Like she was just so good in this. Obviously I'm biased because, you know, attractive. But like I just feel like there's a lot of story potential right there. Like she's an interesting character. She's very supportive and smart. And she has her hero moment. Moments. But there's definitely more she could have done. She's always there, which is really nice. The races were all really fun. The effects are definitely very cartoonish and not all of them really stand the test of time. Thankfully though, I watched it on DVD. So like it hid some of the bad effects, but it's fine. As long as you can accept this as a cartoon, it works. The big issue with this movie is the younger brother and the monkey. They are there for the very young audience and I'm sure little kids would love their shenanigans shenanigans but like man did the movie kind of stop dead whenever they did stuff. They were helpful which was nice. I'm glad that like they in a sense justified the children's shenanigans but yeah we could definitely have done without the level of tomfoolery that they got up to. So yeah no I without a doubt enjoyed this movie. So glad I own it. I wish I had a blu-ray copy of it to be honest mostly for Christina Ricci purposes but you know it's a pretty movie besides just her so like yeah. Anyway, would I recommend it? Yeah, totally. You just gotta accept it's a cartoon. And if you can do that, you're in for a good time. The next up is... Dragon Ball Evolution. This is a 2009 film and I'm very aware of it and all of its pitfalls. I intentionally avoided it because I'm a big Dragon Ball Z fan. I've read all of the manga, I've watched all of the show, and like I knew this was a travesty. But I think in the 15 years since this movie's come out, I've in a sense softened on it. Like yes, they made up a whole new lore that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and it's just strange. And the costumes are terrible. They're trying to be such cool guy 2009 vibes and it's it's uh, it was dated the moment it came out. They can't take themselves seriously. The effects are not great. Like with all of that I went into this with low expectations expecting to kind of hate it but I think because of time and just being exposed to all of the shittiness of this movie I was softer on it. This isn't a didn't like surprisingly enough. It's my second lowest ranking in a minute because there are aspects of the movie that worked for me because if you really boil down Dragon Ball they kind of really just have three storylines. They have searching for the Dragon Ball story, they have fighting tournament story, and they have fighting a big bad guy story. And this movie does all three technically. It mostly focuses on the adventure part, which I like. The big fight with the bad guy is not great, but they do it. And then there is technically a tournament. Chi Chi does it. It's very short, but it exists. So like technically speaking, they got like the spirit of Dragon Ball right. Their execution wasn't the best, but like it's technically there. The characterization wasn't the most off. Goku was never interested in girls. Like the fact that he got married and had a kid is kind of amazing. So that was off. He's all about the adventure and he's about fighting. The one they did the best with was 
Chi Chi, who was without a doubt my favorite part of the movie. In the manga, Chi Chi in the beginning is very fangirl obsessed with Goku to like kind of a stalkerish degree. And she's not quite that extreme here. They kind of toned it down, but in a nice realistic way to where like they have good chemistry and charm. Like it was to the point where I was legit very excited every time she showed up. Especially because like they made her strong. They made her a fighter, which is a thing from like the manga. I just liked her whole vibe. I also liked the fight scene with the bullies where he didn't throw a punch besides the part where he like slid on his head otherwise that was really interesting fight scene that was done well the big end fight scene wasn't but yeah so would i recommend this movie hell no don't watch this movie but also yeah it completely destroys the lore replaces with some very nonsensical stuff but like it kept my attention for the most part the actors weren't bad it was really just like them being disrespectful to the source material but they still got parts right and it was surprising and nice the times where they got things right so yeah it wasn't as big of a dumpster fire as I was expecting, though I totally understand all of the hate. It is definitely deserved, but it wasn't the worst time. So yeah, don't recommend, but it wasn't the worst thing. And lastly is Ghost in the Shell. This is a 2017 film starring Scarlett Johansson and what the f man, Jesus Christ. <sighs> I definitely went into this one with low expectations and was confused because like visually this movie is pretty they spend a lot of time and effort making this world look really good like there's a scene where they walk through a crowd and like there's so much detail and like extras doing stuff a lot of it's physical and like all of the cgi stuff looks really great like they spent a lot of money on this thing but like <sighs> story-wise it reminded me a lot of the recent live action Cowboy Bebop adaptation because it did the same thing in that it took these iconic stories, completely missed the point of them and changed them into just nonsense. Like I'm not a big fanboy of the original. I definitely liked it a good solid amount. It brought up some really interesting existential sci-fi questions and I think it handled them really well. But like this movie just misses the mark so much. Like everyone feels so dumb and the universe doesn't feel lived in like it starts off being like oh major is the first one to be like a human brain inside of a robot body and i'm like that's so dumb a she's not gonna be the first one and b that makes it feel like this universe is so young because they're just like it's not like the far future where technology is crazy different if like they're just getting to this thing that they should have already gotten to especially too like the part where the sidekick character who wasn't bad in this he gets his iconic eyes like halfway through the movie and it's like, why did you have the origin of his iconic eyes? Just have him have them. Like, don't explain that stuff. It's a universe that already exists. It's already on the ground running. You don't need to over explain everything. And like, the story is just so dumb. I don't know what it was going for, but it was going for the wrong thing. And again, I'm not like a big fanboy of the original. I liked it. Is it quite liked? Is it four and five? So yeah, no, I didn't care for this movie and I don't recommend it. The original anime is pretty great. It's well worth a watch. So yeah. Don't watch this trash, just watch the original. All righty, now for today's rankings. First up, we got Speed Racer City number 33 in the really like section. And after that, a long ways down is Dragon Ball Evolution City number 75 in the meh category. Also, I forgot to complain about how they smashed the words dragon and ball together. Like why, why did you do that? Anyway, bringing up the rear rightfully so is Ghost in the Shell, City number 82 in the didn't like section. And this is have a total of 87 old movies so far this year.